Okay, so I want to continue with the terrestrial atmospheres, and this time in particular focus on Earth. So the question is, what, what exactly is happening with Earth's atmosphere right now? So uh, before I go on with that, let's just remember the last video, the most important slide. The, if, if you remember one thing from last video, it was this, the slide that said the most important page. Um, the higher the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, the more heat is going to be trapped, the more of this infrared radiation is going to be trapped on Earth. And this is because carbon dioxide, again, is what we call a greenhouse gas. It traps that infrared radiation. And the more of this there is, the more heat gets trapped. It, it's, again, pretty simple. So let's look at exactly what is going on. Now, this, the, the first page I want to show you here was really just kind of, it blew me away the first time I saw this. And, and I hope that it does for you. And again, the important thing to remember when looking at this is there is a direct relationship to how much CO2 in the atmosphere there is and how much carbon dioxide and, and how much uh, heat is trapped in the atmosphere. So. The first slide is how much con the, the concentration of carbon dioxide over the last thousand years. I'm just going to let this speak for itself for a second. You may not be able to see it, but this, this graphs from the year 1000 AD to the year 2000, and the last five or so years aren't even on this graph here. And the y-axis is the mean carbon dioxide level, or how much carbon dioxide is in the atmosphere. And if you can't see it, this is pretty damn steady here, all the way from about the year 1000, plus or minus 10% or so, to the year about where it starts to change, right about here. And if we go down the axis, if we go down the axis, we see the year here is about 1860. Now, any guess what happened then? It's the Industrial Revolution. So this is not just an aberration. This is, there is some actuality to this. So, again, this is, this is Exhibit A, if you will. This is a very important point, that CO2 has been relatively constant, but it has changed drastically over the last 150 years. And if you look at this trend, this is more than just kind of rising a little bit. This is actually what we call an exponential growth, which is really freaking scary. Okay, Exhibit B. So if we just zoom in on the last about 30 or 40 years, this is what we see. So now we're going to see that First of all, there is, there's a general trend up, and, and we'll get to that in a second. But second, it's a zigzag plot. It goes up and down and up and down and up and down. So what does that mean, actually? First of all, I think this is actually kind of important because what we're actually seeing here, and if, if, you, if you zoomed really far in on this, what we see is that every six months it goes up, and every six months it starts uh, falling down again, rising and falling and rising and falling. And what we're actually seeing here is the seasonal changes in the summer, in the spring to the summer, the trees begin to develop leaves. Those leaves, through the process of photosynthesis, take the CO2 out of the atmosphere, and therefore the CO2 level is dropping. Now in the fall, as we know, the, the leaves fall off the trees, and now all of a sudden there's no more photosynthesis going on. So that there's less of that CO2 turning into oxygen, and that's when the CO2 starts to rise. So even just if we plot it out one year, we can, we can see yearly changes of CO2 down and up, down and up. So that alone leads us to believe that we can actually, this, this is decent science here. We're actually seeing leaves falling off and, and regrowing on trees. But now if we look at the longer scale, we're seeing almost every single year at, at the, if we want to call it the peak of, the peak of winter when the CO2 level is the highest, um, we're seeing that each year it's going up and up and up and up. And that, I mean, it, it's not an exact one-to-one, -one, but the, the general trend is absolutely. Each year we're seeing a little more CO2 in the atmosphere, and a little less CO2 falling out of the atmosphere, if you will. And this is over the last 50 years. CO2 is rising from about 320 parts per million to more recently, and again, this is, this is about a year ago, we're seeing it get up to almost 400 parts per million. Not quite there yet. But at no point have we seen in the last 50 years, have we seen any substantial drop. It is literally rising every year. So CO2 levels are indeed rising in the atmosphere. And this is very direct observation. This is not questionable. This is not, oh yeah, well, I think it might be, I think it might not be. No, this, this is agreed upon data. The data is absolutely rock solid here. Now, if we go further, this is over a much longer time scale. And so what we're doing here is we're actually taking samples out of the ice, the, the ice cores in, 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 in Antarctica. And each year there's a level of, of CO2 that gets trapped in the ice and the ice forms over that. And then CO2 becomes trapped in that ice the next winter, a level of, CO2 form, a level of ice forms over that. And then 
so it, it's a repeating process. Each year as more and more ice builds, we're actually able to see what the atmospheric conditions were for each year for the last few hundred thousand years, which is actually pretty amazing in itself. But again, the, the, the data from recent years agrees with the data that we've taken directly. So we have every reason to believe that this is actually correct. And that this this ice, which has been underneath the, the surface of, of the Antarctic ice plane for the last hundred thousand years has not been disturbed. So we don't think there's any reason to believe that this is inaccurate. Now, what we're seeing here is there is obviously a general change of CO2 levels over the last 100, 200, 300, 400,000 years. And we expect this. This is called planetary dynamics. Things change over the course of, of geological timescales. And we're not arguing that this, this is not happening. No, no one's ever said that CO2 levels have remained absolutely constant. It, it, it's very much accepted that these CO2 levels change. And we actually know why this is. Over the course of hundreds of thousands of years, CO2 is emitted by, by uh, typically by volcanoes or, or by outgassing from inside the Earth. There is huge amounts of CO2 stored within the rocks and Earth. When a volcano erupts, it doesn't it doesn't give off just lava and 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 so forth. It actually gives off a huge stores of, of gas that was trapped in those rocks. And as that CO2 is is given off by volcanoes, and and if as we go through very active geological periods, more and more of that CO2 is dumped in the atmosphere. But it doesn't remain there. What we've also found is that it gets put in the atmosphere, but the oceans are a great resource for, for being able to essentially scrub that CO2 out of the atmosphere. Over the course of thousands of years, not, not a few years, but thousands of years, the oceans are very readily adept at absorbing that CO2 from the atmosphere. And then from there, the CO2 that, that becomes absorbed in the ocean now becomes trapped in the rocks at the bottom of the ocean, what we call carbonaceous rocks. And then those rocks, which have trapped that CO2, due to the course of plate tectonics, eventually end up releasing that trapped CO2 in the form of outgassing again. It's this, it's this repetitive cycle. Now, th that's not really important, but we actually do understand why the CO2 levels rise and fall, rise and fall. And, and we expect that the timescales that this happens on is similar to the timescales of plate tectonics, hundreds of thousands of years. So again, the, the main point here is that these changing levels of CO2 is actually exactly what we'd expect from an active planet where there's plate tectonics and volcanism and an active atmosphere. But the important thing to note here, the maximum amount of CO2 in the atmosphere over the last 400,000 years has been roughly about 300 parts per million. And we, that, that's, that's a very reasonable figure. It's, it's dropped between about 200 to 300,000 and it's fluctuated right in between there as the ice ages come and go, as, as global ice uh, recedes and, and, and advances. And that's very normal. But let's look at what's happened recently. So if you look at the last, if we looked at the last graph, I'd shown where the CO2 levels were as of about five years ago. Now let's actually add last year's data here. This graph over the last 400,000 years, all of a sudden, goes up like this. And this is worrying. The fact that CO2 levels are changing is normal. The fact that CO2 levels are above and beyond anything that's ever been experienced in what we can see as recorded history is not normal. And this is what we're worried about. So, okay, let's go a little further here. Uh, if, if we actually trace the trend, so everything I've shown here has been just the CO2 levels in the atmosphere. And again, this is important because we know that the amount of greenhouse gas, which CO2 is one of the, well, the, the most prevalent uh, greenhouse gas, the, the amount of uh, greenhouse gases in the atmosphere is a direct relation to how much infrared radiation or heat radiation is trapped. But I haven't said anything about the temperatures of the planet. So let's actually look at that. We have been keeping good track of the global temperatures over as far as we can make direct measurements. And we have some indirect measurements of going, going back even further. But let's look at the last few years of direct measurements of global temperatures. And so these are going to be from the NASA website. I mean, not just from the NASA website, from NASA, NASA research studies, which I, I hope we can all agree are valid studies here. Um, if not, then maybe we should be taking an astronomy class. But so, so this came out um, two years ago. 2010 was tied for the warmest year on record, tied with 2005. Let's go back a little further, uh, or I guess a little more recently. Uh, 2011 was the ninth warmest year on record, so, you know, not quite as bad. But I want to point this sentence out here. Um, sorry. This finding continues a trend in which nine of the last ten warmest years in the modern meteorological record have occurred since 2000. So there's been 13 years, 12 if you, if you include entire years of data. Nine of those years have been the 
uh, in the top 10 list of the warmest years on record. And this isn't just an aberration. This isn't just we just had a really warm year one year. This is that this is a continuing trend. And so let's, let's actually plot the direct measurements of data over the last 120, 130 years or so. So here we're seeing the global mean temperatures or glo global average temperatures. And we see that, yeah, it, it's varying a little. But if we look, especially over the last about 40, 50 years, we see there is something that we can't argue with, that there is literally an upward trend here. And I think, so, so a graph is great and all, but let's actually put this in, in the form of a video. And I, I think this is what becomes a little bit more obvious. Oh, oops, here we go. Okay. So this, the, the blue indicates colder temperatures, the red indicates warmer. And this is a time lapse from the year 1884 until present. So here we're seeing some, you know, ebb and flow, some, some rise and fall. So we're getting about 1920s, 1930s. Now we're going to start seeing some minor changes. Look at the Arctic shelf. Now we're getting to the 80s, or well, 70 now. Once we get to the 80s, start to see what happens here. So it stops at 2011. But we see no reason that this is going to stop. This is going to stop now. That the actual trend is going to stop now. And I think this is one of the best graphical ways of showing this that I've seen yet. And so the truth is that the Earth is warming. And this is not disputed by scientific evidence. Now here's the thing. This, this, is, this is a point of contention among, if you follow the news at all, if you follow political cycles. This is, there seems to be a huge argument about whether this is true, whether it's not true, who says this, he says that, blah, blah, blah. The point is the scientific evidence is very strong. Amongst the scientific community, the vast, 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 vast majority of everyone who has researched this agrees on this data. This is not in question. It's the interpretation and what we do with it that's the tough part of this. And, and please note that I'm not trying to, to convey any sort of political point. I, I, I've completely avoided any political discussion. I'm simply focusing on the science, and the science is very well-founded. These are very well respected authors, people who literally are, are basing their careers on these on these findings. And this data is not falsified. This is not in question. The data is understood to be correct. It's what we do with that data is the question. So some more, some more studies uh, going forward. What are we going to see? Now, there has been numerous studies on, on what we're going to see in the future. Now, so we're right about here. And this is projected air temperatures over the next 90, 100 years or so. And every single one of these studies shows that temperatures are going to, not only are they rising right now, but they're going to continue rising. And if we look, some studies have um, uh, seem to indicate that temperatures are going to rise a little bit and level off. Other studies indicate that temperatures are going to start rising even faster than they are today. And this red study right here, um, the, the, what seems to be rising the fastest, unfortunately, as more data has come out, so this is uh, from the IPCC, the Intergover Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, uh, as of 2007, unfortunately, we're, w new evidence is showing that not even the strongest model here is correct, that we think that things are actually even getting faster, even faster than the worst model that we've predicted. And so this is not something to be taken lightly. This is the, 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 the data and evidence are showing that this is actually even more of a problem than what we might have predicted even six years ago. And I just, I, I, I need to show this here as well. This is um, from the USDOE, the Department of Energy, the global total emissions of, um, of carbon. What we, when we burn fuel, when we burn gas, when we burn coal and so on, we emit CO2. And if we just look over the last 200 years, it, it's pretty un indisputable that as technology rises, as our energy consumption rises, as our use of anything that gives off energy rises, the CO2 emissions are also rising. And this is in complete agreement with our CO2 levels in the atmosphere rising. It wouldn't make sense if we're burning more fuel and the CO2 levels are dropping. That would be a red flag that something's wrong there. What we're seeing is CO2 emissions or carbon emissions are increasing at the same time as CO2 levels are increasing. And I, I, it, it just seems to me that it's, it's so obvious here that CO2 levels are rising, carbon emissions are rising, temperatures are rising. It takes a very strange theory for those three not to be related. And if you put everything in perspective, these three things are intimately connected. 
And these three things are very much linked. That what we're, what's happening now on Earth, rising levels of CO2 is directly related to our energy consumption, in particular our carbon emissions. And that directly explains the rising temperatures, which again are not in dispute amongst the scientific community. So I, this is not meant to scare you. This is not meant to be some doomsday prophecy or anything like this. What can we do about this? I, I, I'm not making this to pose any answers. Uh, you can read up on this. Obviously, you can, you can do simple things from conserving energy in your house, recycling, uh, leading a more energy efficient lifestyle. But I mean, honestly, all of this, what an individual can do with their own lifetime is is small. I think the biggest thing that we could possibly do is simply understand, simply grasp that there is a problem, simply understand what the science is behind this and what the what the debate is actually about. I, I leave you with this. This again, I think this this ex, this is the, the the most important graph that you will see here. Again, it's not. I'm not. There's not solutions. There's not easy solutions. There's not tough solutions. There, the verdict is out there. But the fact is, this is an experiment that running that we're running on the entire world that has never done bef been done before. If it's going to turn out okay, that's great. But unfortunately, the the worst case scenarios seem to be the ones that are actually much more likely now. And I think that alone is the the most important thing that you can understand. Just a simple understanding. This is the fact of of the the modern state of the knowledge as it is right now. So. Um, I, I hope this helps solidify and, and, and help you understand a little bit more about the, the science of climate change and the science of atmospheric science, if you will. Um, but again, I, I'd be more than happy to, to run a whole discussion about this or, or something, so please let me know. Thanks. Bye.